Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java and Raspberry Pi programming tutorial series. This tutorial is, I'm going to teach you basically an introduction to the uh, Java ME AMS, the application management system there. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and open up my web browser to my website, pyjava.com, select Pi Programming, and select the AMS introduction. Now the Java ME Application Management System, AMS, is basically the heart and soul of running Java ME programs, well, more accurately, running Java ME suites. Now a Java ME suite consists of a, of a JAD, a Java Application Descriptor, and a JAR, a Java Archive, that contains a bare minimum, a class, right, which is a bytecode, and a manifest file. Now the class, the bytecode file, must have been compiled from a Java source code file that contains it contains a class that extends the abstract midlet class. And don't worry about if that doesn't make much sense right at the moment there. It definitely will in towards the end of this tutorial or following tutorials. Now any number of suites can be installed into the AMS. When a suite is run by the AMS, the AMS invokes the start app method and program execution begins at that point. When a suite is stopped by the AMS, the AMS invokes the destroy app method allowing you to free up resources and save any program state that you may require. Now I concluded my previous tutorial, Blinking LED, with the Blinking LED suite still installed in the AMS. I'm going to begin this tutorial at that point, so if you have not completed that tutorial, please do so in order to follow along with this one. In my previous tutorial, we executed some scripts from the Java ME bin folder. Uh, install midlets sh, list midlets sh, and run suite sh. Now these scripts were executed directly from the terminal on the Raspberry Pi. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to remotely execute AMS commands from my Windows computer using CMD. Um, I will show you how to create a shortcut to the command window and uh, install a program called PuTTY that we will need in order to run remote AMS commands. I will also unzip the Java ME installation files to a folder on my Windows C drive called Java ME, right? C colon backslash Java ME. And see video for details, which is, you might be watching that already rather than reading it. Okay, um, so first things first. Uh, you know what? Actually, a command prompt. Uh, to create a shortcut to that, you just simply right click anywhere on your desktop, select new fol no, not folder shortcut. Uh, new. Shortcut, type in CMD, Charles Mary David, next and finish. It's just that easy. Uh, to create a shortcut to remote desktop, you can go to new shortcut, um, type in MSTSC, okay? And that will create a shortcut to the remote desktop. I'm going to go ahead and delete that off. Remote desktop is not actually necessary. If you've got your Raspberry Pi running with a keyboard, mouse, and another monitor, that's fine too. You can directly control it from there. Um, the last thing we need is PuTTY. So um, PuTTY is a free download there, and I'm not going to go into too much explaining about it because it's, it's pretty comprehensive software there, but you can go to putty.org, and uh, basically you can select their download here, select your, um, your operating system. I'm running Windows there, so I just downloaded that there. And I'll leave you to installing that and creating your shortcut there. I won't go into that in this video there. I'm pretty sure you guys can figure that one out there. Okay, um, opening up the command prompt, I'm going to change directories to uh, CD uh, Java, Java ME. Okay. Um, if I do a directory here, you can see this is that file that we downloaded in my other video where I showed you how to install Java ME on the Raspberry Pi. I simply have that same file over here and I unzipped it all into this Java ME folder. Okay, so you can see we got the uh, same, same everything here. Okay, <clears throat> so um, the first thing I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to connect over right over into, uh, into my Raspberry Pi there, remote desktop into it. And um, <clears throat> I'm going to open up a terminal window here. And we're going to change directories to the Java ME folder. And then we're going to change directories to the bin folder. Okay, if we do an ls here, here's those scripts that we were running before there. Um, we're going we're gonna to use this user test test script here this time. So we're going to do sudo dot slash user test sh. Oh. 
Okay, and we should see Java is starting. Control C to exit. Don't worry about these errors that come up there, really nothing there. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to my Windows box there. All right, now um, inside of this this util, this uh, util folder right here, let's change directories to that, util, all right? And we're gonna do a directory here. You can see there's a proxy.jar. We're gonna use this Java archive here. So I'm gonna type in a command and I'm not gonna explain exactly what this does. I'll save that for a future tutorial, but um, and then we're gonna put minus socket and then we're gonna put the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. Now, it's on my Wi-Fi network there and I'm gonna switch back to, uh, to that one there. And so the easiest way to get your IP address here is you can come up and like hold it over your Wi-Fi adapter. But if you're connected through uh, just like an ethernet cable, you can see my, my IP address there is 10.0.0.35. You can open up a terminal here and type in uh, if config, right? And um, basically what you're looking for here is this is my wireless ethernet my wireless connection here and I got 10.0.0.35 if you had your wire, your wire plugged in your ethernet wire plugged in you just basically have an IP address up here in ETH0 so that's the easiest way to find your IP address there um, it's a very similar command to, while I'm on the top yeah, yeah, never mind okay so anyway so I got the IP address of that and I just want to hit enter on this get trying to open socket connection and we got connected to the raw socket right and then we've got the IP address some port 2201 local port so on and so forth there um, at this point we are we've established a connection over to there so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up uh, and just minimize that and I'm gonna open up putty okay and you don't have to change the appearance here I'm just gonna make this font larger so when it comes up into the the session window here, it'll be a little bit easier to read. So I'm gonna go back to the session. So host name here, you'll type in localhost, then port 65002, and we're gonna do a connection type raw, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and open that. So our session window comes up here, and if you've got everything configured properly there, you're gonna see connected device, Raspberry Pi, Model B, uh, Java MEM, any embedded version and you'll see the IP address colon 2201 prompt okay now um, back in my previous tutorial we could do stuff like you know uh, list midlets run that particular script there but over here we can do stuff like for example AMS dash list okay um, from the previous tutorial I never removed the uh, blinking LED suite, so it is of course still in here. So um, down here on my, uh, let's see, let me pull up my my little window there. I've got my Raspberry Pi going here. Yeah, LED, same thing from the last tutorial there. And what I'm going to do here is we're going to go ahead and issue the AMS-run command. And this is this is suite zero here, right? This zero in front of blinking LED is the suite that we want to run. So we'll go ahead and do AMS-run zero, okay? And now you can see over here, my LED is in fact blinking. So we just started running that program from, from last time there. Um, so let's see, we can also issue commands like AMS-stop. And I'm not going to go through all of the, oh yeah, you know, I have to do uh, AMS-stop. And then of course the suite number that we want to stop. Uh, you know, it'd probably help if I type that in, right? Stop and zero, right? Okay. It takes a second for that stop to actually execute there. You can see that, you know, we basically had that running over there on our Raspberry Pi console window there. And also in addition to that, it was it was running over here too on our local command window there. Maybe I'll start that back up so you can see that, that running on both of there. So I'll just do AMS-run zero, right? And over there you can see it's running on the Raspberry Pi. We've got our blinking. Um, and then down here, we've got essentially the same same console output there. So, um, trying to think if there was anything else I wanted to do on this tutorial there. 
No, um, not not really, because this is just kind of designed to give you an introduction to this there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do a uh, AMS stop zero. And boop, we got our stops. LED stop blinking, stop getting our console output on everything there. Um, so that uh, that basically kind of gives you just a, a good overview on that there. That stopped there too as well. Now we're still connected in there. So um, when packet was received, sending a keep alive is not required, right? And it's still talking with the with the Raspberry Pi over here through the remote AMS. One more command that I'm going to issue is just uh, shut down. Okay, and you'll see that we just went right back to the um, right back to the prompt there on the Raspberry Pi, and if we come over to the window with our proxy running, it's still trying to open the, the socket connection, which it can't anymore because the Raspberry Pi has done undo a control C to stop that. Close out of that window. Of course, we got our network error, right? And we can close out of the putty session there too as well. I'll go ahead and minimize that and minimize that and just leave you guys with some quick final thoughts there. So basically this tutorial is designed to provide a general overview of what the AMS is and how it functions. Stay tuned for my next tutorial while I will go over the midlet class. Thanks for watching.